And so as our meditation comes to a close, gently bring your awareness back to your surroundings, into your bodies, and as you feel ready, open your eyes. Welcome to those of you who have joined us while our meditation was in progress. We're so glad to have you with us virtually or in person. Let's begin with an, our opening chant, God is in this place. God is in this place. God is in this place. God is in this holy place. God is in this place. Love, love. Join me in prayer. Recognizing the one, the one power that is everywhere present, all knowing and all powerful. This one present, whom I call God, is the good of which there is no opposite and there is nothing equal. God is in this place. And I absolutely know without a doubt that there is nothing that can separate me from my Creator. I am an emanation of the divine. I know this for myself. I know for this for every being, whether on Zoom, on Facebook, in the sanctuary, or anywhere in the world. We are all emanations of the divine, and we all have all of the attributes of God. And I speak my word for this lovely Wednesday service, knowing that God is channeled through our beloved Reverend Sydney, that she speaks God's word to us with love and light and laughter. And I absolutely know that we hear exactly what we need to hear. We learn exactly what we need to learn. And it is all done with love. And I am so grateful and we are so blessed to have our very talented musicians, Sam and Tina. We are blessed by Adam's giving us sound and light. We are blessed by all the volunteers and the staff that put this service together. And with a grateful heart, I release my word into the law of nine. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily strength and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive against us. And lead us not to, an, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Mystery man, I 
come to you for answers, trying to find the puzzles in my brain. Did you know a mighty wind came rushing in and took my love in a hurricane? Do clouds relate to one another or do they get so tense that they have to blow? I don't know science, but I know my heart aches. Every time a loved one has to go. Mystery men, you've got it all together, and that's why everybody comes to you I suppose I should have asked you sooner then I'd know exactly what to do I'm wondering why can't people live forever and would you tell me Would you show me which way leads to heaven? Would you give me the answers to this song? Mystery man, today I saw rainbow and suddenly a smile was on my face is it real or is it really magic all those colors sharing in one space sunrise and sunset and in between Wow. Well, that's pretty much my talk. <sighs> I'm talking tonight about God's will. And it's a fascinating thing when we start talking about the will of God we tend to want to get superstitious. It must be God's will that that happened. A hurricane, it's God's will. Somebody died, surprisingly, it's God's will. Um, I lost my job, God's will. I got a job, it's God's will. Um, I lost 10 pounds, it's God's will. If I gain 10 pounds, it's God's will. God just, it must be God's will that this happened. You know, we blame so much on God when it goes wrong, 
And then how often do we honor the infinite power and presence when our lives go right, when they go the way we want? Well, I must have been good. <laughs> what is the song from The Sound of Music? I must have done something good. Yes, I could have had a, I must have had a wicked childhood. Oh my God. So in New Thought, we teach a very clear idea that there is one infinite power and presence. One infinite power and presence, not two, one, okay? God the good omnipotent. God the good omnipotent. That phrase actually is from unity, but we are all doing the same thing. We're all teaching the same thing. There is one power and one presence. It is God the good omnipotent. So we teach that it's not just omnipotent, but it's omnipresent and omniscient. In other words, God is all there is. And not just convenient for when something goes wrong, you know, it's got to be God's will, that God up there, the capricious moody one with borderline personality disorder, or, oh, it's God's will. What a beautiful, beautiful whatever it is that something happened. It's God's will. No, it's all God. It's all God. When we say omnipotent, it's not that we are saying that some being out there is, is all-powerful, like the great and powerful Oz, but we are saying that God is all power. This, in that word omnipresent, it's not just that God's all the presence, but God is all presence. And when we talk with, about omniscience or omniscient, it's not that God has all the wisdom, it's that God is all wisdom. It's all God. It's all God. Let me put it this way. Um, a lot of you, I know your names, some of them I don't know your names, but Really, I come in here every night and I think, hi God, hi God, hi God, hi God, how you doing? Hi God, hi God. And if you're thinking that that's wrong, I really, really want to encourage you to consider another way of thinking about that, okay? You were God. So if I say, hi God, I would like you to honor that truth in me and say, hi God, back. Like, good evening, God. Thank you, because we have to do this. We need, this is why we're all here on the planet together. We practice with each other. We grow together. Spiritual communities are just such an amazing thing because we get to work out our stuff with each other. We get to succeed with each other. We fail with each other. We love with each other. We might be indifferent with each other, but that's the nature of this, this microcosm is that we get to express the truth that God is in all colors, shapes, sizes, flavors, good, bad, or indifferent. This is God, and we get to be the expression. And there are times when I get up in the morning, and I, I you know, you've heard that thing of, do you, get, do you get up in the morning and say, good morning, God, or good God morning? Well, I do both. I mean, don't you? I mean, let's be real here. So when we talk about God is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. These words, for me at least, do not leave room for doubt about the range or the extent of that thing which we call God or whatever your word might be for this loving in infinite source. And we teach that God is everywhere equally present. So not only is this infinite power and presence of love and wisdom never absence or absent, or as Michael Beckwith likes to say, the presence in which there is no absence, God is always accessible, available, responsive, and active. God is active as that, that presence, that energy, that expression of love. God is expressive as that activity of music. God is active as that, ex as that activity of, of our digital ministry. God is active as you and me, all of it. This is God, not the guy up in the sky that we've given a personality to and created in our image, but the God that we personalize. The God that we personalize. God free of personality. It is we who give personality to that infinite power and presence. 
when we come into this teaching and this thinking, it can be really challenging to release the God that you grew up with, especially um, if you got, got the, uh, the, the mean God, the snarky God. You know, you, we need to do that, though, if we're going to replace it with a God that is, is loving. And now that might sound blasphemous. You know, we want to replace the mean God with maybe you think it's a fanciful God or just way too nice. How can a presence be that nice, that loving? How can that even be? So one of the things I see with people all the time in New Thought is the uncertainty that even though we teach that God is all good and only good, there's a tendency to believe that God <laughs> responds more to some people than others. Especially, we'll see that if we start comparing our lives or ourselves to somebody else. Have you noticed? Where we think, well, gosh, life must really be working for them. God must really, really like them. They must be really, really connected. You know, we get a whole thing about saying, well, God is all good and all present, blah, 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 blah. But that guy over there is much better at this stuff than I am, so God must like him better. We really want to believe in and embrace a God that doesn't suffer from a borderline personality disorder, but we have been shown too many times that our experience of life is inconsistent. So God must be inconsistent too, right? You know, if that's what that is, then, then God must be inconsistent. Um, and I've seen in myself that there are areas that I have withholds or exclusions. Um, I have little places in my thinking where there might be exclusions about God being everywhere active and present and equally present and that I, about my connection with God. Um, and there are times where I think to myself, apparently I missed the, the exclusions because I didn't read the fine print or the whole contract and my, my relationship with God. I must have blown it somehow. Sometimes I'll get these coupons, and you guys probably get them too, you know, the 20% off um, from Macy's, Ralph's Target, whatever, you know, all those places. And then there are all those little tiny, tiny impossible to read paragraphs that have the exclusions and the exceptions, right? The things that, that the discounts don't apply to. So I have found myself happily and victoriously striding into Macy's thinking, I'm going to score so big. I'm just going to get over on this, these people. And then I find the stuff I want is excluded from the big sale. Um, I mean, really, don't you hate that? Why can't I get Ralph Lauren or Jockey for Her at a 20% discount? I mean, come on. <laughs> and then, of course, it's just a short little mental hop to, well, how come other people can afford this stuff? They don't even need coupons or special sales. That's not fair. God likes them better. Or I must have messed up somewhere, so now I have to work harder and scrimp and save to even buy good sushi. I'm paying for my mistakes now. Anybody? Even little degrees? <laughs> so when I prepare my talk titles, I usually give them um, to Terry Prince about a month or two in advance. And I'll do the titles and the descriptions. And they'll be about two or three sentences, which helps me to really focus and have a mindset about what it is I, I want to talk about so that when I go back in two months to actually create a talk, create a message, I'll know what it is I was thinking two months prior. Because if I don't do that, um, I'm, I, I, then I kind of sit there thinking, what was I thinking about? What was I going to talk about? Um, so here's the description I wrote uh, two months ago for Terry. Ernest Holmes wrote that God's will for us is good. And then the voices in our heads argue, but what if it's not? If we're going to have voices in our heads, then let's make sure they are worthy of our attention. <laughs> so the voices in my head like to mess with me sometimes, and no, they're not always worthy of my attention. They're really not. Now, I don't know about the voices in your heads, but the voices in my head, or let's just say here on planet Sydney, like to start yammering and hammering away at my peace of mind and my well-being, usually about 3 in the morning, 3 a.m., yeah? Everything seems to be going well. I'm sleeping. All of a sudden, I realize I'm awake. Oh, man. And those voices sound an awful lot like that same inner dialogue I have when I find out I missed the exclusions or the fine print. It's that same thing. How come life is better for other people? 
Why can't I eat lots of bread and pasta and look as skinny as she does? And why am I the one who had to lose her iPhone? And then comes the big one, right? How is any of this God's will? <sighs> again and again, and sometimes again and again after that, I have to go back to the full statement from Ernest Holmes. The will of God is not a submission to the inevitably, in, in inevitability of evil or limitation. It is a knowledge that the will of God is always good. I want to say that again because I'd like to have a running start at pronouncing that word. The will of God is not a submission to the inevitability of evil or limitation. It is a knowledge that the will of God is always good. And he also wrote this, anything, anything that will enable us to express greater life, greater happiness, greater power, so long as it doesn't harm anyone, must be the will of God for us. As much life as one can conceive will become a part of his or her experience. As much as we can conceive. As much as we can conceive. You know, sometimes I think our imaginations get a little rusty because we don't conceive big enough. We don't imagine big enough. We don't embody big enough. We think, well, it would be nice to have a... a Maybe we'll have a Christmas without a cold or a flu in the family. Oh, come on. Can we go bigger than that? How about let's have a Christmas in which we are all just energetic and we are radiant and we are sharing with each other and creating with each other and life is an amazing experience. Oh, that feels good. I can embody that. I can feel that. I can really feel that. I can, I can feel it so much more than, well, I hope we don't have any colds this year. I want to feel this stuff. And that's, that's the whole, the key with God, the key with his presence is that it responds and reflects back to us. Or as Dr. Mark says, that we, we are that reflection of God. It reflects back to us what we are believing and thinking and how we are, are living in, within our minds. So if our minds are in this puny place of, I hope I don't get a cold, hope I don't get a flu, Hope I don't get that COVID thing. You know, there's, there's, there's power in that too. And it's the power of resignation. But the power that is energetic and sets the law in motion, spiritual law, to fulfill us, to support us, is the one that says, I now declare and claim I'm a being of spirit. I am infinite. I am infinite in potential. I am unlimited, unlimited in possibility. I'm here for good. I'm here for joy. I'm here for, for love and laughter and celebration. And all that I have, all that I need, all of it is already in me. Because I'm God. I'm God, baby. I'm hot stuff. I am here to be God. I'm not here to be <sighs> adjacent to God. I'm not here as God adjacent. I'm here as God. I'm here as God, not God adjacent. It's really important to remember that. You know, Meister Eckhart, we were just talking about this quote the other night in our practitioner class. Meister Eckhart said, the only thing God wants is to be God in you. That's it. Not looking for high performance or, or a, a, a straight A grade. God just wants to be God. God wants us to say yes. That's the imperative. So Ernest Holmes also tells us the how, the how of living in, within this divine container of good, which is the will of God, and by the way, the nature of God. And he says, we should contact a larger field of faith. This is done by understanding that God is the giver and sustainer of human life and expression. God is all there is. He or she or it is substance and supply. We must learn to accept this. If it is God's pleasure to give us the kingdom, then it should be our privilege to accept the gift. It should be our privilege. Now understand that the Bible is all written in allegory and metaphor. So this idea of the kingdom, the kingdom, is that it is that, that inner life. It is our inner life. And for the record, when you hear the word Lord and you start to go, Ugh, Lord 
means the presence within. The presence within. Sometimes we have sung a song here called um, Sanctuary. And I know that people used to get kind of weird about it. You know, Lord, create in me a sanctuary. Presence within, create in me a bigger understanding of peace, a bigger awareness of the truth that already is. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Presence within, prepare me to, to be all that I already am. So let's get back to this idea, this belief in exclusions. There are no hidden exclusions. It, hard, no, okay, one more time. Take two and scene. There are no hidden exclusions, small print or exceptions to or in God. None. Nothing you and I can do can ever invalidate our contract or our agreement. It, 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 we have an agreement with the infinite that is, it's already assured. You and I, however, do have exclusions. We have small print. We have hidden conditions in our own beliefs. So the, the conditions are the hidden, the hidden things, the small print, that's not in God or in the idea of God's will. That's in us. That's in us. If I have a belief that I'm excluded from the good that God is or that life will try to withhold from me, then my experiences and my relationships, by the way, will absolutely show up as withholding or being exclusionary because that is the belief that I'm living in. That is, that's the kingdom I'm living in, right? That's my kingdom. That's not, that's a sucky kingdom. I don't recommend it. I want everyone to live in a kingdom that has infinite power, potential, possibility, and joy, and humor, and love, and delight, and quiche. I want everybody to love that and to have that. If I can move into non-resistance of my, oh, well, there's one. If I can move out of this place of, of resisting my good into non-resistance of my good and into acceptance that God is everywhere equally present, including me and you, then my experiences will shift according to that. So, case in point, a lot of you know that we um, have been in temporary quarters since we moved here um, towards the end of August. And it's been, we'll call it rustic, a rustic Airbnb. We'll call it bohemian. <laughs> and we have to be out tomorrow, which worked out fine because we knew and had the promise from the, the movers and it was on the contract that the very last, the latest day that our stuff, which has been in storage in Oregon, would come to us would be the 28th because, you know, we found a house, we went through escrow, all of that stuff and said, okay, this is the day. And they said, that's what we will do. So the moving company agent called us yesterday morning and said, okay, so we'll, um, we'll be loading up your stuff sometime on Thursday in Oregon. And we'll be down uh, after that. Friday or Saturday, probably Saturday. <laughs> what? <laughs> say what? God's will, say what? So my first reaction was not holy. <laughs> it really wasn't very sacred. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't God-like by any stretch of the imagination. Well, it was God, yes, it was God-like. It was absolutely me expressing God in the form of what? So, exactly, thank you, tornado and hurricane. So I'll let you use your imaginations about what I said. Um, let me just assure you, it had nothing to do with God's will for us being good. It really, really didn't. However, I moved ever so quickly into non-resistance, acceptance, and even forgiveness when this agent told us that because of the inconvenience, they would be reimbursing us for hotel costs and meals since he knew that we had to be out of our little Airbnb tomorrow. So, tomorrow afternoon, we're going to check into the Hyatt Regency. <laughs> I heard hotel and I went, okay, I'm on it. I will order room service. I will sleep on a beautiful big king-size bed with a mattress doesn't do that. We will have internet that doesn't glitch. We will be in a lush, fully carpeted room with a view, a room that didn't used to be a garage. 
and a room that has made service. Oh my God. Um, when we dare to remember and when we dare to claim God's will as anything, as Ernest said, anything that will enable us to express greater life, greater happiness, greater power, and also then remember that, as he also said, as much life as you and I can conceive will become a part of our experience, our lives change. But it starts here. God doesn't happen to us from out here. God happens to us from in here. If I had stayed in this place of resistance and anger and wishing horrible, horrible things to all of the people of this moving company. If I'd stayed there, then that would have been my experience. But I had to move quickly into acceptance and forgiveness because it's just so much easier. I don't have the bandwidth for resistance anymore. I really, really don't. There's so much that life, you know, life sometimes comes at us like it's being shot out of a cannon. So I don't have the bandwidth to, to remember who I'm angry at, who I'm resentful about, what didn't work out, and, and why I can't forgive this person over here. I don't, I can't do that. I just can't do that. It's too hard. It's exhausting. So I don't do it. And I remind myself all the time, acceptance, acceptance, forgiveness, forgiveness, acceptance, forgiveness, acceptance, forgiveness, over and over and over, because it just feels so much better. And life works so much better. You know, God wants us to be big, bold, joyful. God wants us to be abundant celebrations of love. God's will is not to pick and choose, hide the truth, or mess with us. God's will is for good. It is for good. God's not the enemy. <laughs> What's the line? The enemy is within. <laughs> we have met the enemy and it is us. Guess what? There is no enemy. There's only creating a bigger circle around who we are so that we can have compassion for ourselves and our frustrations, our impatiences, all of those things, and then come back to remembering that we're part of God, that we are God. We're God. So for those of you who also get those 3 a.m. voices in your head, I want you to write this number down. You ready? Especially you people playing our game at home. Um, 818-762-7566. Now that's the number of the church. We should all know it, right? 818-762-7566, extension 310. Extension 310. This is the number for our dial-up prayer. That's our dial of prayer. So you can call that number anytime, 3 a.m., 3 p.m., and be loved up and be loved back into sanity, faith, and peace of mind. Our practitioners, our amazing praying people who have trained and studied and grown their consciousness forever and ever, change the outgoing message every week, every week, and it's powerful. So... 7627566 extension 310 let's pray shall we all right what a glorious and wonderful thing to remember that the only will god's will is good that this infinitely wise infinitely loving powerful presence that is both source and substance, creator and created, is that which oh, is fully orbed within us, around us, and as us, and has brought us into this place to be a celebration of such delight, of such magnificence, of such wonder, and such good, and joy, and love, and compassion, that that is who and what we are. So we dare now to release any ideas that are less than that. They have no power here. They have no agency here. We let them go. They are not part of who and what we are. We release them into the nothingness from which they came. They are dissolved. And in their place remains the truth that God is love. We are love. We are God's love in perfect, oh, ongoing expression. And it is good. I speak my word to know that if a circumstance or a situation 
appears to be an experience of limitation in any area, God is there. God is present. God is there. If the experience appears to be one of a relationship issue, God is there. That the truth is there. That the power and presence is absolutely the only activity going on. And if the experience appears to be one of limited health or concern about a loved one, concerned about a physical experience or expression, I know that the expression of God is absolutely defining and divining every fiber, cell, muscle, atom, bone, everything in our physical and our metaphysical lives. I know that God is fully, fully expressing right now in the activity of wholeness, and that wholeness is expressing through our money, through our careers, through, through all, through all that we would seek to have a greater experience. Through all of those, God is present. And I speak my word for this country and our leaders, knowing that they are guided. Because this infinite mind, which is our mind, is one mind, therefore their mind, and we are each walking in the intention and united by the intention for oneness, for wholeness, for an ever-expanding good. I know this because there is no place that can be separate from God. There is no one who can be apart from God, whether they want to or not. So I know that there is now a divine receptivity on our planet for good, blessing our climate, blessing our water, our resources, all of it, and blessing our children, holding all of them in love, holding all of us in love. And so I invite you to say with me that I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. Let's say it again with power. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. So with gratitude, I release this word into spiritual law, knowing that these aren't just whims that we've spoken about, but we have moved spiritual law into action. And it is responsive because simply all it is doing is demonstrating the truth that already is, that there is only one power, one presence, and it, was, it is God, the good, omnipotent. And it is our life. It is our mind. It is all of that right here and right now. Ah, so I do release these words into law, declaring, and so it is. And together we say, amen. our love offerings, our gifts. So whether you have your offering here in the room in your hand or you are doing it as an automatic tithe or you are at home and you know that this gift is something that you are 
planning to tithe and to give and to bless us with, I just invite you now to take that offering or the idea, symbol of it, whatever it is, and to put it in your hand and hold it to your heart. And together we say this, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Gail back up here. She's got some announcements. Good stuff going on. We have a lot of good stuff going on. Life is good. Sure is. <laughs> Hello. Some announcements. There are ways you can make donations to keep our spiritual house going. Call the office 818-762-7566. Go to nhcrs.org slash give. Text the word give to 818-457-3419. If you shop on Amazon, which I'm sure we all do, I know I do, we select, we could select our church. It's called the Smile, Amazon Smile. We select our church, which is under the name of Church of Religious Science, North Hollywood. And Amazon will donate money to our church. It will cost you nothing. I do it. I've been doing it for over a year now. It's great. And it's no cost to us. It's just Amazon gives the money. Okay. Prayer with a practitioner. After the service, you could pray with a practitioner if you come up to the, right there, around here. Or if you're on Zoom, go on Zoom and um, you could go in a breakout room with a practitioner and have prayer. If you're on Facebook, switch to Zoom, and then you could go on and have a, a prayer with a practitioner. Email prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org, or put a prayer request in the prayer box, which is, I think, in the foyer. And you could call in prayer requests to the church office, and just um, which is 818-762-7566, option four. Well... Wednesday night next week, November 3rd, will be our Taze service. And the meditation begins at 6.50 p.m. and the service starts at 7 p.m. Join us next week for the Taze service. The evening will begin with a sound meditation followed by practitioner Joanne O'Brien, joined by Reverend Sidney, facilitating an hour of sacred chanting, readings, and meditation. You don't want to miss this, it's fabulous. Youth Church is open on Sundays. We welcome youth of all ages to our 9.45 a.m. service. We are currently meeting outside on the church lawn. 
free spooktacular Halloween costume party and movie night. This Friday, October 29th from 7 to 10 p.m. <laughs> Join us at 7 p.m. sharp for a costume contest with super fun prizes followed by a screening of the movie Young Frankenstein <laughs> and food and treats on the patio. Please sign up in the foyer if you are planning to attend or email Terry at admin at nhcrs.org. And we really want you to come. Wear your costumes. I have an incredible costume planned. It's really fun. I know that Dr. Mark is wearing a costume. Um, oh my gosh, some of the people here have told me what they plan to wear. And it's a, it's a contest. And the prizes are ridiculous. They're ridiculous. No, we're not giving you a trip to Hawaii. <laughs> El Segundo, maybe, but. <laughs> I hope that you will join us. Make sure you come. We have food. We're going to be having food, not just like little things, but real food, actual food. So you've got to come. Food and treats. Yeah. Speaking of that, You, Food, and God, Part 2, is a workshop given by Reverend Nadine, Saturday, November 13th, from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, in person or on Zoom. Join Reverend Nadine and world-renowned transformational coach Tara Parker for this incredible workshop. Tara works somatically, which is mind and body, and utilizes a variety of techniques, including EFT, which is tapping, to initiate a quicker process with emotional detoxing. Prior to the workshop, please read the book Women, Food, and God by Janine Roth and keep a daily food, food journal. The cost is $30. Won't want to miss that. There's a Zoom virtual patty before and a patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. So if you're on Zoom, just ask, every, ask um, the Zoom host and they will put you on the patio so you could join us for some schmoozing. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Zoom meditation. Every morning we have a Zoom meditation. Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. So if you go on our website, you can find out the Zoom codes. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. And now, Reverend Sidney will give us our benediction. Thank you. Yay! Isn't it fun to have people back? <laughs> okay, I'm taking off my mask. If I must. All right. Now I have to rearrange the microphone, so just work with me. We have a new mic. Don't you like it? Yeah. It's the Madonna mic. <laughs> All right. Or the, or the Garth Brooks mic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Sydney mic. All right. So, I just once again invite you to just turn within, enjoy, and in delight and gratitude for all that has been, knowing that this is transformation and this is what God feels like. This is what joy feels like. This is what love and community feels like. So how wonderful that we've been able to come together and be a part of that and to be a part of the the growth and the expansion of consciousness, whether we have been oh, part of the digital community, Zoom room, Facebook room, at home in your own room or here in this room, together we all move into that upper room of consciousness, knowing that we are walking each other home and it is good. So I am grateful for all that we have done. I bless this church. I bless all churches all mosques, temples, synagogues, ashrams, all paths to God. And we are each part of that beautiful, wonderful experience of love, of joy, of blessing. So we just say yes, 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 and so it is. Together we say amen. Thank you. Let's
Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say.